monkey business. Hey, Madison! Just in time. Are you and your magic zapper ready to help us meet the stars of our show? Can anyone guess what animals we're going to see? <laughs> yep, monkeys and apes. And they come in all shapes and sizes. So get set for some real surprises. In the jungles, you'll discover a clever chimp who's a champ. Why squirrel monkeys are losing their homes. And what all the howler monkeys are howling about. We'll journey to the mountains of Africa to see what it takes to be the king of the apes. Then it's off to India to meet some laid-back langurs. And Japan for a visit with a troop of trendy macaques. And then there's the plains where we have babysitting baboons. Barefoot monkeys with way out hairdos. And even a super strong Hamadryas baboon or two. There are over 100 kinds of monkeys and apes. Check out the nose on this character. Looks like that you carry monkey could use some sunscreen. And these are marmosets. Did you know that it would take 200 itty bitty marmoset babies to make one gorilla baby? A baby gorilla weighs about five pounds. That's probably smaller than when you were first born. But when he grows up, he'll be the biggest of all the apes, weighing in at up to 450 pounds. Hmm, where's the rest of the kids? Let's meet the family. Gorillas live in big family groups, and I mean big. There were moms, dads, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, and lots of cousins. Here's a new addition to the family. He's only a few hours old, so he really needs his mom, especially considering the rest of the family is rather boisterous. Once there's word of a new arrival, all the curious cousins can't wait to check it out. Well, almost all the cousins. There are two or three other little guys in the family. As soon as they can crawl, they'll check out the neighborhood, count their fingers and toes, take the occasional nap, or just hang out with the older kids. Now that's what I call a jungle gym. So, who's the boss around here? I'd say it's this guy. He's called a silverback, which means among gorillas, he's tops. How can you tell? Well, just check out his back. That pounding on his chest lets everyone know who's king of the mountain. This one's a little young to be on top. But it never hurts to have a secret weapon. Or a nice big hug from mom. Gorillas are very protective of their little ones. And very patient, too. Now, here's one baby who won't take a nap. But does he have to walk on mom's head? <laughs> These kids are up to their usual monkey business. Does this one want to be a bongo player when he grows up? All this wrestling establishes who will be top gun in the group when they get older. I wouldn't try this at home.
Gorilla babies know one thing for sure. When it comes to a playmate, it's tough to beat mom. Don't you think she has her mom's eyes? Most baby monkeys and apes look just like their parents, but there's always one odd ball. See if you can spot who it is. Looks like a perfect pair of macaques. Two orangutan lookalikes. A couple matching langurs. Is this baby colobus in the right place? Are you sure? Let's check. That baby's all white with no black. Is mom babysitting someone else's kid? Some babies do look different at first. The baby colobus stays white for several weeks, but will end up with a black coat and white beard just like his mother. This silver leaf monkey may not look unusual, but just try and guess what color her baby is. Orange. Is that so she can find her in the dark? Actually, the color is a signal to her parents that she's small and needs extra care. And probably a ride. On the move. Let's head them up and move them out. Slow down. They need to be good grabbers because they start upside down. It's okay if you're going slow, but at full speed, it can be quite a test. Phew, made it. They move up to riding bareback when they're about six months old. These backseat drivers are a little more experienced. If you think hitching a ride is tough on the ground, wait till you get in the trees. These howlers are having a howling good time, enjoying nature's trapeze. Of course, a tail helps. That baby better hold on tight. Whoa! Let's see that again. That must have been one fun ride. Learning the hard way. Remember when you were little? Your arms and legs never seemed to do what you wanted them to do. But you practiced and practiced. That was learning the hard way. It was the same for all of us. So you kept trying, and still you fell down a lot, just like this little guy. It was pretty tough. Then, after all that practice, crawling and walking, it's time to climb. This monkey is learning that everything that goes up must come down. Are monkeys born climbers? Not quite. Just watch. Sometimes they get tied up with their friends, get confused and don't know which way is up, can't find the forest for the trees. And get very dizzy. This little fellow's learning the ropes. What's that monkey got that we haven't got? A tail. It <laughs> looks like it comes in pretty handy, too.
I'll bet this chimp wishes he had one. But who needs a tail to play skin the cat? Will this chimp ever be a champ? Would you like to meet the king of the swingers? He's called the Gibbon. Let's watch him go ape. With those super stretch arms and toes that squeeze, Gibbons float through the air with the greatest of ease. What's going on? He slowed down his pace. That gives us a chance to admire his grace. What's this? The backstroke? <laughs> He's breaking the rules. Now there's a neat trick he did not learn in school. School days! Does this look like school to you? It must be gym class. These little guys are bodybuilding, learning to jump, run, and climb. You might say they're studying their three M's. Mischief, meddling, and monkey business. Actually, they're learning survival skills in safe surroundings. This is the monkey version of leapfrog. Up on a cliff, they have to learn to be more careful. The secret is to take it slowly and stay calm. Unless you spot a shortcut. Then the lesson is to stay in single file. Hey, a cliffside is no place to pick a fight. It may look like they have a good grip, but one slip is all it takes. Right, coach? Those langers look more like their school goof-offs. Where's their teacher? I think they just found her. Here's a new version of pin the tail on the donkey. It's called pull the tail on the monkey. Looks like this class has gone head over heels just to hang out with or on the teacher. But I think we may be stretching things a little. Spending this much time on nature's playground should turn out some incredible athletes ready to escape from anything except mom. He wants to keep playing, but she's pretty fast. She has to be because there are some scary animals out there. Look, is that a dangerous snake? How are the monkey kids going to know he's there? Listen. Looks like all their schooling is paying off. Who's going to save the baby? It's mom to the rescue. Thanks to her, that baby howler will live to learn a few more lessons. And the snake will learn that there's no such thing as a free lunch. Speaking of free lunches, these Japanese macaques are about to enjoy a sweet potato picnic at the beach. 
But who wants to eat sandy sweet potatoes? Yuck! So what's a poor monkey to do with a dirty potato or two? It's a puzzle that has these monkeys running in circles. Can you guess what happened next? To the rescue! One smart macaque named Emo. She didn't like sand on her sweet potatoes, so she rinsed them off. The others watched. And ever since, they all washed their sweet potatoes. Do you know what else they learned? That sweet potatoes taste better with a little bit of salt. Salt water, that is. All together now. One potato, two potato, three potato, four. Five potato, six potato. Think I'll eat some more. Dinner time. For small babies, dinner time is never far. And mother's milk is the best. But it's not long before baby wants to try what mom's eating. And what do big monkeys like to eat? Bananas are great. But let's see what else is on the menu. Juicy ripe berries and fruit that is sweet. Tough milk coconuts. Crunchy palms are a treat. Fruit, leaves, and blossoms on trees. Even small bugs and a couple of bees. Marmosets munch tree bark. And monkeys love buds. While others eat seed pots, all covered with fuzz. Now, what does a stick have to do with dinner time? Is it sticks for supper again? Nah. He's going to use it to crack nuts. And nut cracking is a family affair. Believe it or not, it'll take that young chimp 10 years to learn dad's nut cracking trick. The whole family works together, gathering nuts. I said gather, not scatter. That's better. This guy can't wait to get cracking. This one may have oversized ambitions. Unfortunately, his plans include Big Daddy's favorite nutcracking club. Guess he'll have to find another one. If you can't find a stick to do the trick, just give it a knock with a big old rock. Nutcracker's learning a hard lesson. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again, and again, and again. Now that's a hard nut to crack. Time to ring the dinner bell. Everyone can take credit for helping with this meal. But will somebody please wake Junior? If you are what you eat, these chimps are nuts. Let's review. Gather your nuts. 
Then pick the right stick, then give them a lick. That chimp is a champ. <laughs> Bath time! <laughs> what do you think these Japanese macaques are doing? Hot tubbing! It gets very cold in the snowy mountains of Japan. Good thing nature provides mineral hot baths. Actually, monkeys don't really need water to clean their fur, or soap, or a washcloth. But in this climate, they can use this ready-made jacuzzi to get nice and warm. But when they get out, they better dry off quickly, or their fur will freeze. Brrr, now that's cold. This baby sure is lucky to have mom around. How do monkeys stay squeaky clean? Well, it's sort of a dry cleaning method, where they comb each other with their fingers. They carefully pick out bits of dirt and biting insects. This mother doesn't miss an inch, let alone a foot. Imagine a beauty parlor full of monkeys. They get together. Groom each other, have a nice chat. Some parts of grooming are less fun. Like dealing with painful knots. Ouch! Sort of like when your mom brushes the tangles out of your hair. Look at those monkey shines. <laughs> These guys are really laid back. <sighs> Bedtime. Where do baby monkeys and apes sleep? In a nice comfy bed like you? Where do you think that big strong gorilla sleeps? Anywhere he wants. Actually, adult gorillas are too heavy to sleep in trees, so they snuggle up in leafy nests on the ground. It's just a matter of getting all tucked in when you're all tuckered out. Fluff that pillow. Now that baby's napping, Mama Gorilla can get her beauty rest. This teenager is still light enough to prefer a tree house. Hmm. The forest is the monkey's bedroom, playground, and dining room. In fact, it's their entire world. Are those gorillas snoring again? I'm afraid not. People think they need the trees too. Disappearing trees mean that monkeys start to disappear. Every hour, somewhere in the world, forests the size of 40 football fields are being cut down. These squirrel monkeys are losing their homes. That emperor tamarin is now a very rare sight in the trees. And there are less than 400 of these spider monkeys living in the wild. What can we do? Good idea! If enough people care, we can turn things around so there will always be enough trees. Chimps like these really need those forests. Unlike gorillas, they go upstairs where they build themselves comfortable leafy beds. Picture yourself nodding off in a bunk bed in the sky. What a beautiful place to sleep.
Story time! Have you heard the story of the three wise monkeys? Their story begins many years ago on a beautiful island in Japan. Here, monkeys were considered sacred animals. They lived in the forests before man came. Then came monks who built their temples here. They say that monkeys helped carry the wood. Well, not those monkeys, their ancestors. The legend tells that the monks left offerings of food to the spirits of the forest. Guess who took the food? <laughs> you got it, the monkeys. You'd think all that monkeying around would make the monks mad at the monkeys. Not really. They thought the monkeys were taking the foods to the gods. The monks were so pleased that they carved monkeys on their temple. They even wrote a poem in honor of their furry helpers. It said, to stay out of trouble is to hear no evil, speak no evil, and see no evil. <laughs> Looks like these three didn't get the message. Making mischief and monkeying around is a way of life for monkeys all over the world. Mischief time! Picture a peaceful scene in the forest, next to gentle lapping waves. But not for long. Here comes the mischief brigade. Last one ends up. Monkey's uncle. That one in the fur bikini is all wet. Is this one looking for his trunks, or is he teaching the others the monkey crawl? The lifeguard has her hands full, keeping an eye on this brood today. There's her little darling. Now you see him, now you don't. How many times have you tried that? Meanwhile, this little fella's getting his courage up on the high diving board. There seems to be a dispute over who's next. One for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, go monkey go! And the peanut gallery is going wild. 